Hey, what's up? Steph Sweezy here. I'm a big mountain snowmobiler, and today I'm going to walk you through the process I take when dropping cliffs. First off is to scope out your feature. Now, this is pretty important. There's a few things that you have to think about. First, like anything, you start small. Don't find something super huge that's way above your comfort level. Maybe, you know, you can go a little hair above and just small increments at a time. So you feel comfortable with what you're doing. It's kind of the same approach for small cliffs as big cliffs. So once you feel really comfortable uh, doing the smaller stuff, then it's a lot easier to work your way up to bigger and bigger drops. So scoping it out, you want a good size that you're comfortable with and you want to look at snow conditions. You want to think, is it going to be deep enough for the drop I'm doing? The steeper it is, the more you can get away with it being not being as deep. If it's bigger drop and it's not that steep, then you want it to be really deep. This is kind of something that's hard to explain you'll learn, learn as you go. You want to kind of make sure that it's the right conditions for what you're doing. You want to make sure that your landing is clear. One thing you want to count on is that you can't see for a couple seconds when you land. So you want to make sure that you're going to have a pretty clear outrun. So if there's trees and stuff in the outrun, you'd like to avoid those. You want your trajectory to take you away from those for at least a little bit. Ideally for a while. Um, again, depends on how big you're going. In run. So I like to, when at all possible, go to the top and, and walk it through. And uh, I do a lot of visualization when I do this. It helps when I can see the landing. So if it's safe, key words being if it's safe, and it's something that I can walk to the edge and, and look over, that's awesome. I usually take up that opportunity to do that and then you can, that's a good time to throw a couple snowballs, get an idea where you're gonna land. The snowball thing is gonna take a bit of practice but eventually you start getting an idea of how hard to throw your snowball and where your snowball lands to associating that with how fast you need to go off the lip to get your snowball and the ideal landing spot. When you get to stand on the edge, it really gives you a good feel on what's going to be on the other side and how your landing is going to look. When you look at things from the bottom, they can often look a lot more intimidating than they really are. And it's hard to get a real feel for how everything's going to go. Now, this doesn't always work out. Sometimes you just have to roll into them. Sometimes it's not safe, like a cornice. I don't mess around with cornices. It's gonna be a cornice. I look at the landing from the side, from a safe spot, like a tree or a rock or something. Something I know is not gonna give out and they'll just roll off. But when it's safe and when you're learning, I strongly encourage you to find a drop that you can safely walk to the edge. Now, at this point, you want a spot where you wanna land and I often will walk back and I'll make a name run. Now, sometimes this doesn't necessarily mean like you're building a track. You want a clean path ahead of you for your in run. Ideally, you want a clean in run that's not gonna be off camber, that's gonna be relatively straight. Cause when I go off the lip, I really like to feel like I'm in control and that's where I wanna go. In this particular drop that we're using as an example, it's pretty well set up. Now. You can see as I come in, I'm a bit on one side of the sled, and that's only at the very beginning of the in run. But as soon as I'm ready to go off the lip, I'm in the right position that I want to be in, and it's flat. Now, it's a really good angle going out, and I feel like it's really setting me up nicely. So that's something to keep in mind for your in run is the angle of the snow. And if you are going to be coming in off camber, that's okay but just make sure that you're prepared for that and that you can handle that and you're confident and comfortable in handling that. And if you're not 150% confident that you're gonna be in control of that snowmobile before you go off that cliff, I'd walk away. It's, you're not ready for that drop. I've done that before and I freaked out at the top. It hasn't gone out as, it hasn't worked out as I wanted and I stopped and I got stuck and it was an absolute nightmare getting my sled off the very top of that cliff because I wasn't ready for it. I just, I didn't have the skill to do that at the time. Another um, really important thing to do for the in run is 
is make a very solid clear line in the exact direction you want to go because you don't want to be thinking about this and trying to figuring it out when you're coming in so if it's all open and you can land anywhere it's not a big deal but it is a good habit to get into especially when you want to land in a specific spot and you want to avoid uh, trees so what i do is i often just make a very distinct line in the snow like an arrow straight this way that's distinct i can see sometimes i'll go as far as to putting a branch or something there so it's really obvious but usually a line will suffice now sometimes i will brush a little bit of snow off the in run just so i am very clear that this is this is my path another thing to think of is that if you're parking your sled and you're ready to go you've got everything lined up and you've cleaned off your in run you know exactly where you're going you have an idea of your landing how fast you need to go etc and you go to start your sled keep in mind how long has that sled been shut off for and you want to make sure it's warmed up before you go so if it's been a while and you're spending a while building the in run then just let your sled warm up even just go do a loop turn around sometimes it helps shake off nerves anyways and uh, make sure your sled's warmed up before you hit it when you come in you want to you want to have a strong stance i call it my power stance your feet a little bit back i have my hands out kind of slightly over the handlebars and my elbows out you want to be standing strong so you're in control of that sled and that sled's gonna do what you want not the other way around okay for takeoff i like to be coming in with enough speed that i can be smooth off the lip so speed coming in is going to depend on the drop and where you need to land main thing is i like to come in with a bit of momentum so i want at least a few sled lengths back i like as much space back as i can coming in so i can come in kind of relaxed because the main thing you don't want to pin it off off the lip um you want to give it a bit of a, a shot like a strong enough shot off the lip that your nose is going to come up but you don't want to pin it off where your nose is going to come up super high and you're going to slap down because ideally you want to match strain when you land now how much of a shot and your speed is going to depend on the landing and the angle of where you land this particular drop is not an overly steep landing and it's relatively flat take off there's a bit of angle at both but well more angle at landing obviously there's a little bit of angle at the takeoff but it's not tons so i don't have to give this tons of throttle i'm coming at it with enough speed to there's a bit i have to clear in this so i have i'm coming in with enough speed that i can make sure that i'm confidently clearing that but that's more coming with my in run speed and then when i come to the lip i'm just giving it just enough of a shot not a huge one but just enough of a shot to get the uh to get the nose in the air so it can match strain and i don't really do a lot in the air it's not like jumping where i'm playing with the throttle and the brake a bit more generally for for drops i want to set myself up right off the takeoff now here comes into play where the benefit of starting small is so huge because it takes a bit to learn exactly what that shot is some people err on the side of not enough of a shot and their nose goes down and some people like myself aired on the shot side of giving it too much of a shot because i was nervous about nose diving coming off cliffs when i first learned so i always gave it too much throttle and when you're going off something that's you know under five feet really doesn't matter you know you give it too little or not enough and the consequences are going to be like beyond minimal whereas when you get to a drop of this size and the one in this example it's going to be a pretty big deal if you you kind of mess that one up nothing too aggressive now this part it's going to take a bit to fine tune with how much how much throttle you need to give on the exact lip too little and you'll nose dive which is super scary so generally err on the side of giving it a bit more than you think you need and fine tuning this now fine tuning this on smaller drops this is when it really really gets key midair now this is this is what it's all about this is the gold part uh, this is what keeps me coming back for more it's an incredible feeling of dropping it's accentuated more on slower takeoffs when you're just kind of popping off then it's almost like a stall and you're dropping and it's 
it's amazing. But from a how-to kind of fact standpoint, there's not really too much you can do in the air, actually. You know, your takeoff is going to depict a lot how your sled's going to be laid out and how it's going to come down. You can fix things a little bit in the air, you know, with your throttle and whatnot. If you feel like you didn't give it enough throttle on the takeoff and you want to get that nose up, which if that's the case, you very much want to get that nose up, hit the throttle. Sometimes, especially if you have a lot of time in the air, I can hit, I'll hit my throttle kind of midair, just quick little brop. And then generally I don't really touch it till I'm right about to land. And then right before I land, I give it a quick brop and then and then I'm back on the throttle the second I land, even just a split second before. Because it's really important that you have that track moving when you land. You don't want to land without that throttle or else you're just going to smash into that ground. So back to, uh, about to, this is another point where it becomes really important to start small. Because I don't mean to scare you with the smash and you won't really smash if it's small. But when you start hitting bigger drops, you really want that to be second nature because that's really important. Most important thing about landing is just get that track moving. It might sound silly and obvious. When I first started trying to do airs, nobody told me that you had to hit the throttle when you landed. And I learned the hard way. I, I slammed those bars, my face into those bars, quite a few times before somebody said you have to hit the throttle when you land. Well, go figure. Okay, after you land, now the next thing is the bounce. The bigger the drop and the flatter the drop, the more of a bounce. Often the bounce kind of gets ignored and you're not really taking it into account when you're looking into where, how your drop's gonna work out and stuff, you're just worried about landing. But the bounce can be, can be kind of wild. Uh, it's hard to really tell on this particular drop, but I had a pretty good, it, it shook me pretty good. The landing itself felt really nice, but the bounce is what can be unpredictable. Especially when it's kind of deep or it's a bit flatter, it can kind of fling you out all sorts of different ways. The only thing I can really tell you is just brace for it and be prepared for it. Get ready to get back on the throttle when you land again, because the bounce will put you in the air. You know, back to smaller drops, you might not bounce too much. When you start getting bigger drops, you definitely will bounce. So just be prepared for where that's going to take you and you're on it and it doesn't take you by surprise. So yeah, I wish I could give you more insight on that bounce, but just be ready for it. By the time you hit that, your adrenaline is probably like at 10 anyways and you're ready to handle that bounce. Now, last thing, be prepared to not be able to see for a few seconds when you land, especially when it's deeper. Sometimes in certain circumstances, it can stick to your goggles even and you'll be fully blinded until you stop. So you need to prepare for that being a potential reality and really have a good idea of where your route is. And after you land, if there's any trees or anything in the way, you want to know about them. And don't freak out when that happens because we know what's in our way even longer when we probably need, you know, we have a good clean path ahead and we know that if there's gonna be trees further ahead of us or dips or rolls or anything that um, might be in front of us, we're ready for it because we knew it was there. You know where everything is, you prepare for it and you can relax and enjoy the moment and be stoked because you just killed it. And the world is now your oyster. Once you conquer a few small ones, you can just keep working your way up and up and up. And in my opinion, it's, it's hard to beat the feeling of doing nice big drops in the stone bill. Hopefully this video was helpful. Um, if you guys have any questions at all, let me know. You can either comment or you can reach out to me on Instagram. It's Steph Sweezy and shoot me a message and love to hear your feedback and help you in any way I can. Drop on ladies. Woo!